Okay, in the next topic, uh, we will solve uh, the problems of finding the Laplace transform of uh, a special type of function. It's called as the unit step function. Okay, this is also referred to as heavy side function. So first let's try to define the function, right? The unit step function or a heavy side function is defined as, so this is u of t minus a. This is equal to zero whenever t is less than zero and this is going to be one if t is so it's a zero for t less than a and it's one for t greater than a so that is the definition of the function right now uh, if i want i want to take uh, there is there are two properties associated with the with this particular function okay so that is the first property right i want to find the laplace of uh, u of t minus a okay so let's calculate that u is equal to as per the definition this is 0 to infinity e to the minus st into u of t minus a u of t minus a dt right so we know that this function is not valid from 0 to a so let's split this integral 0 to a u of t minus a e to the minus st dt plus this is a to infinity u of t minus a e to the minus st dt okay so first part it is going to be zero because z the, in this range the function itself is zero plus in the second part it is integral a to infinity u of t minus a is 1 at that particular point Hello, hello, Nitish. Yeah, uh, sorry, I uh, lost internet in a moment. Just a second. So, uh, between a to infinity, u of uh, t minus a is 1 into e to the minus st dt. So this has to be now equal to, I integrate e to the minus st as e to the minus st divided by minus s. Okay, this is from a to infinity. So what happens now? So this has, I have to substitute uh, 
e and infinity to e this so this is minus 1 by s into when you put infinity this is 0 minus e to the power minus e s right so the answer is e to the minus e s divided by s so the point to uh, remember or if you are making a table please make an entry u of t minus a has the laplace that is e to the power minus a s by s okay so that will be the entry in our uh, table okay next uh, this is also a property of uh, the heaviside function so so there is another uh, property associated with that this is the first uh, one which we have seen now so the second one is uh, what happens when i multiply by a function to that okay so so the so let us say that we have a function uh, say f of t whose laplace is known to us and we call that as f of s okay then if i write f of t minus a into u of t minus a so you see f of t gets f of t minus a u of t becomes u of t minus then its Laplace will be e to the minus as into f of s. So this is the property. Okay, so let us, uh, let's prove this. So we'll start from the left hand side and I want to take the Laplace of f of t minus a into u of t minus a. And uh, by the definition, this has to be integral 0 to infinity f of t minus a u of t minus a e to the minus est dt. Okay, so I know that since I'm multiplying by u of t minus a function will, the product will never exist whenever t is lesser than a right so that's why this has to be integral 0 to a is a first part right this is e, uh, f of t minus a it might exist but u of t does not exist that's why i write as 0 e to e to the minus st dt so first function does not exist because it is 0 so integration of 0 is not going to come plus the second part is a to infinity f of t minus a into u of t minus a is 1 e to the minus st t. Okay, so what we are going to do now? So ultimately, I have to sim uh, simplify integral a to infinity f of t minus a e to the minus st dt to get the answer. Okay. It's a proof, that's all. Right? No, right? I'm trying to give a proof. You can see that whenever we write something like this, it is a property, right? This property needs to be remembered, right? This property needs to be remembered. But what I'm, I'm trying to do here is uh, for which one you are trying to find the range? T minus A, whatever A you put here, same A will come here, right? It's a constant. A is a constant, right? You know that we can write t minus 2, t plus 2, t minus 45, t plus 85, like that, right? It's a number. It's a constant value, all right? Okay, let us proceed. So now I need to simplify only the right-hand side. So this is, okay, I'll try, try to write this as it is simply, it is A to infinity f of t minus A e to the minus S T D T. All right, so what we do, let's try to make a substitution. And I think the t minus a can be substituted as, uh, say, some variable. All right, so put 
t minus a is equal to b. All right, so I have a dt in my equation, so I should substitute that. This implies that dt in the equation can be simply replaced as db. All right, and I also know that t varies from a, t goes till infinity, right? So when t is equal to a, what happens to b? It's t minus a is b. So b is equal to a minus a, so that is equal to zero. Similarly, t goes to the upper limit, which is infinity. Put t is infinity in the above equation. Infinity minus a is equal to b. So b becomes equal to infinity. So we got the lower and the upper range. Right? So simply substitute now. This implies. Right? This is equal to. Now I am writing for v. Integral v is starting from 0 to infinity. This is f of v. Okay? f of v. I have e to the minus st. So that is e to the power minus s. So what is t? Right? t is equal to a plus b. Isn't it? a plus b. Uh, dt is equal to dv. So in this term, I can see that I can take out, uh, I can split the e to the power minus sa and minus sp. So I'll take the constant term out because Integration is with respect to b. So e to the power minus a s yes, I'll take out. It is integral 0 to infinity f of v e to the power minus s v dv. So that means the integral can be directly replaced by the Laplace transform. Right? So this is e to the power minus a s yes, into f of s is a proof. All right, fine. Then so the first function you can see that it's just the u of t minus e. Yes, if the function is you are multiplying. You will multiply by right you'll multiply by f of t minus a into u of t minus a it becomes e to the minus a is by f of s all right okay so la laplace of f of t minus a u of t minus a okay so, hope this is clear. All right. Now, so let's apply this and solve some of the problems. All right. So, say my function f of t is equal to, uh, say, e to the power t minus 1 plus sine of t minus 1 whole multiplied by u of t minus 1. All right. So uh, the trick here is that we, I should identify that this function uh, comes from the Heaviside function is that everywhere you have, you do you will not be having the t, but a shifted version of t and multiplication happens with a shifted version of unit step function okay u of t minus a you can see a u of t the t minus a everywhere are you are you comfortable that with that right i can see that the t minus a everywhere okay so what i do this uh, i can try to write uh, in order to convert this back into first i can try to find out uh, what is the f of t here so f of t is given so i'll write a g of t Okay, so g of t is equal to replace every t minus 1 by t and write only the function. So this is the function. The function is e to the t plus sine t. Can you see that? This is the function. This has been later converted into everywhere t minus 1 and multiplied by u of t minus 1. Are you okay with that?
right so i also explained why i did that right yes fine so first objective is that by looking at this i understand that okay yeah so you have to go back and check the property once again the property says that for a f of t i should know f of s in this case there is no u right i'm not multiplying by u so f of t is already u so i call this as g of t that's all so i am writing a g of t now for which i'm going to take its laplace as g of s then what i do i do g of t minus 1 into u of t minus 1. that's what is the given question isn't it are you understanding okay all right, so let's go back to the problem. So as per this property, first I need to find a function whose Laplace is known to you. Okay, right. So that's why I try to put it in this fashion. So g of t is this. Let's calculate its Laplace and write it as g of s. So we know from our basics, right? Already we have studied. e to the t has a Laplace 1 divided by s minus 1. Okay, plus sine t has sin a t, a is 1, so 1 divided by s square plus 1. Is it okay? Right. Now you write the shifted version of the function. That is, this implies, if at all I write e to the t minus 1 plus sin of t minus 1, multiply this by u of t minus 1. Right? What should happen as per the rule? The same function should be multiplied by e to the power minus a s. a is equal to 1 here. So it is e to the minus s into the same function which I wrote earlier. That is 1 by s minus 1 plus 1 by s square plus 1 is the required answer. Okay, let me know once you are comfortable. We can move. Okay, next problem, f of t is equal to sin t into u of t minus pi. So, I know that I, in order to convert this into the g of t, I should add pi, right? So, this is sin of t plus pi. What, but what is sin of uh, 180 plus theta? Sin pi plus this thing. What is the... Uh, No, 180 plus or minus will be the sine itself, but the sine, it's minus sine t. Okay, so that is minus sine t. So, what will be its Laplace then? G of s. It's minus of 1 divided by s square. Okay, all right. So, then now I'll write f of t as, right? Uh, g of t minus 1, sorry, g of t minus pi, okay, into u of t minus pi, isn't it? What is f of t? Okay, yeah, please substitute. Then this implies sine t into u of t minus pi should be equal to, right? What's the Laplace? e to the power. I can see that uh, I'm multiplying by pi s, right? And there is a minus 1, so that is minus divided by s square plus 1. Same answer. The next question. f of t is equal to 3t squared plus 4t plus 5 into u of t minus 3. Okay, so it's very clear now what we are supposed to do. I have to get a g of t and I understand that the t minus 3 is there. So I should perform the t plus 3 inside every term. So this is 3 times 
t plus 3 whole square plus 4 times t plus 3 plus 5 is the g of t. Okay, can you simplify this? Three t square plus oh yeah, twenty two t plus forty four. Okay, now uh, you are supposed to find out its Laplace, correct? So calculate the Laplace to get the g of s. So three t square, three t square becomes three into it's a two factorial correct plus 22 by s square plus 44 divided by s okay so 3 into 2 factorial is simply 6 all right so that's the first part now you write directly you can write the answer this implies if i write 3 t square plus 40 plus 5 into u of t minus 3 what should be the laplace then the g of s should be multiplied by e to the power minus a s e to the minus 3 s into 6 divided by s cube plus 22 by s square plus 44 by s is the required answer that's all Is it okay? Fine. So let's uh, move further and uh, let's look at another uh, important property and then we will come back to the problem. Now, so there is, it's again, this is uh, what we already have in elementary mathematics, but uh, we need to recall that once. So writing uh, a function f of t is equal to, let's say it's a function f1 of t whenever the function t is less than or equal to a okay and we can write f2 of t it's a different function whenever t is greater than a okay so actually so how do you uh, uh, write this okay there is a representation anyway uh, i'll try to write a notation for that this can actually be written in the following fashion okay so this is, it can be written as the f1 of t plus f2 of t minus f1 of t into u of t minus e. Okay, this is how we try to write this particular function. Now, I'll prove that. Okay, the f of t can also be written like this is what I'm saying, but let me try to prove this. Okay, so what I do, this is equal to, I have to prove that this itself will come ultimately. Okay, so this is f1 of t plus, I'll write the this as it is, f2 of t minus f1 of t. But instead of u of t minus a, what I'll write, I'll write this is 0, right? For t less than or equal to a, it is 1 for t greater than a. Is it okay? So whenever I have one, I can multiply other term, it becomes zero, right? So this means this can be rewritten as f1 of t so in the next step I'm, I'll multiply this with the one. Wherever I see a one, I'll multiply. Okay, so that means uh, this whole function becomes equal to so I'll bring the bracket here. This is 0 for t less than or equal to a and it is f2 of t minus f1 of t for what's the range? That is t greater than a. Right? So now you see I, I have to add f1 of t to this function, isn't it? Right? So what happens? This is f1 of t 
f1 of t gets added to 0. So that is t less than or equal to e. The f1 of t gets added to the second line, this as well. So that becomes f1 of t plus f2 minus f1. So that is simply f2, correct? Of t for t greater than e. Right? We started with the f of t and we, we ended up with the first line of the statement. Kindly check that and that's, that's what we are going to use in the upcoming problems. The same logic uh, can actually be, ex, uh, ex, uh, we can apply that for, and to we can expand this to a three level statements as well. I'll just write the required uh, statement, that's all. We are not going to prove it uh, because it's the same steps, right? So if at all you have, right, f of t, is equal to let's say this is f1 of t right for t less than or equal to a this is f2 of t for a less than t less than or equal to b and f3 of t for t greater than b if this is the case right we can equivalently rewrite this as f1 of t just recall the previous step, the second function that is f2 of t minus f1 of t into a unit step starting at this position. Okay, that is a, that is u of t minus e. Right? Plus, now I get another term, right? So here also you have a subtraction coming into picture. So that we are going to write it in the following way. So that is plus another bracket f3 of t minus f2 of t it's simple expansion of our previous statement okay into u of t minus b and so right if at all i had a f4 of 3 right t greater than c one more term would have come right f4 minus f3 into u of t minus c and so let us solve some So we'll move on to the problems based on this concept. Problem number one is uh, f of t is equal to, this is cos t zero less than or equal to t, uh, less than or equal to pi by two and Okay, I will write it. Let me give a sine t here. Okay, this is sine t for 0 to pi by 2. This is cos t uh, for t greater than pi by 2. So if you remember, this can be right by applying the property. I can try to write this as f1 of t, that is sine t plus f2 minus f1, f2 is cos, cos t minus sine t into unit step function, u of t minus pi by 2. Is it okay? So that is the f of t now. If at all I want to find out the Laplace of f of t, then that should be Laplace of sine t and Laplace of this, correct? So I know something which is already sine t, I can directly write. What is the Laplace? This is the first part, right? First part of f of t. So yes, that's the question. Okay, so it has to be given, right? So sine t is equal to one divided by s square plus one. Yes, sure. Here, we don't, I don't think we have any other option. That's a, that's a, that's a property. We have to apply the property to solve. It may be lengthy, right? It depends on the, uh, who set, who chooses a question. If they want to give a lengthy question, it will definitely be lengthy. Okay.
Now this is a this is a case, right? Uh, if it is lesser than zero, it's not defined. It's a zero. If at all t is lesser than zero, right? You see, in, in this case, t is less than zero means function itself f of t is zero. Okay. Yes, yes. If at all t is mentioned as lesser than zero, it will be zero. That's all. 